person from the middle is already re well recognized. Okay, uh, so uh, now you see the answers. Uh, so Primo Levi, uh, Italian uh, writer, Elio Toaf, who was a rabbi of uh, Rome, Rita Levi Montalcini, uh, a famous uh, uh, neurologist and Nobel Prize, and the oldest uh, Nobel Prize who ever uh, lived because she is the first Nobel Prize who lived more than 100 years. Uh, Benjamin Disraeli, he was not born in Italy, but almost all his ancestors came to England from uh, Italy. Uh, Amedeo Modigliani is a famous painter, uh, a French painter of Italian origin. Uh, and uh, uh, the industrialist uh, Adriano Olivetti uh, and the two writers, uh, a couple, uh, married couple, uh, uh, Alberto Moravi and Elza Mor Morante, uh, actually, in Italy, uh, people uh, started to have uh, uh, mixed marriages much early, I think, when, at least in, when in Eastern Europe. So uh, it's not a surprise that people uh, like Moravia, Morante, uh, Olivetti, all of them are half Jewish. Uh, okay, so uh, the topics for today Four uh, global topics. Uh, I will start with Italy uh, before uh, 1492, so before the expulsion of Jews from uh, Spain. The second topic will be uh, some general features of Italian Jews uh, during the uh, next 300 years. And uh, we will discuss uh, how uh, being based on the name, uh, I mean last name, so surname, uh, we can uh, often recognize uh, what were uh, the community uh, to which the first bearer uh, um, uh, uh, belonged. And the last topic, a few words about uh, migration of Italian Jews to other countries. So uh, before 1492. Uh, the earliest references to uh, Jews on the territory of modern Italy correspond to the period, uh, of course, correspond to antiquity, uh, but uh, to make uh, any statistics on names, and here I mean first names, which were the only names used at that period, uh, we can make this statistic uh, for the period of from the third to the seventh uh, century, uh, uh, according to the inscription found in Rome catacombs. And uh, for if we consider all names, uh, for, uh, given names that appear for Jews at that period, you see here that a majority of them were based on Latin. Uh, um, almost one half also was based on Greek language and only 15% were based on Hebrew on Aramaic. So why the uh, total number is uh, bigger than 100? It's because for some people, uh, some people were called by two names. And so usually in this case, we were having one Hebrew name, for example, and one Latin or Greek name. So at that period, uh, Hebrew was almost no, not used at least for, uh, uh, for naming practices. And uh, what are the typical names? You see here uh, many uh, Greek names and uh, Greek names were, were used by Greek Christians at that period, May, uh, numerous uh, Roman names uh, just borrowed from um, the uh, local majority, non-Jewish majority. And uh, names uh, taken from uh, the Bible like uh, Judas, Simon, uh, Isaac, uh, Joseph, we usually, uh, I counted them as Hebrew, but actually we often appear in the Greek or Latin forms. Uh, so Jews came to Italy, 
to the territory of modern Italy uh, in the antiquity already. And so uh, there was a community in Rome and uh, there was a, uh, also a large community in, in Sicily. And then uh, from the territory of uh, modern Italy, also in, uh, in the early Middle Ages, there were already migration to southern France. And we know just for about one family, which is, uh, uh, one can say, partly legendary as a par uh, family of Calonymus uh, and uh, Calonymides uh, who came to the island uh, from the uh, town of Luca in uh, modern Tuscany. But uh, this is the only example of uh, Jews who, uh, for which we know uh, that they came to the uh, Western Europe, to the Ashkenazi community uh, from Italy. Uh, in the Middle Ages uh, and uh, after the end of Middle Ages, of course, we were no Italy. Italy appeared in the 19th century only as a country. And here you see a, a map uh, of different states that existed at the end of the 15th century uh, with several republics of Venice, Genoa, uh, with uh, in central Italy, uh, purple states and uh, all of southern it of Italy uh, covered by uh, Kingdom of uh, Naples. Uh, as Sicily also and Kingdom that belonged to the crown of Aragon. So uh, here I presented uh, the results of, uh, excuse me, results of the study of uh, uh, Israel, uh, Italian Israeli uh, demographer Sergio Delle Pergola uh, concerning the estimation and numbers of thousands of Jews who lived in different parts of the modern uh, uh, and the territories that today belong to Italy uh, at the end of 15th century. Uh, the total number is about uh, uh, slightly bigger than uh, 30 uh, 30,000, and actually this number of 30,000 remained, remained almost stable for many centuries. But what is important to note is that at that period, a large majority of Jews who lived in the territory of modern Italy, they lived in Sicily. And only uh, on small minority lived in other areas. Uh, what are the uh, first uh, known last names in the territory of modern Italy? Uh, one of the names that exist until now, Anau or Anav, uh, uh, coming from the Hebrew uh, route, is known in Italy and Rome, uh, beginning with the 11th century. Uh, there are also references uh, to the families De Pomis and De Rossi uh, from the 13th century. In the 14th century, we have a reference to the family Kamhi that uh, surely came from Spain or from Southern, uh, may, may, uh, either directly or uh, uh, through the Southern France. But globally speaking, at that period in the Middle Ages, uh, names were really rare. Uh, people were called by first names, by their patronymics, but not by last names. How, what was uh, going on outside of Rome? Uh, in the uh, northwest, uh, in the territory of the, uh, that today correspond to Piedmont, uh, we find a number of names uh, at the start of the 15th century. Names like Foa, Lattes, Treves, Kremi, Trevot, Segre, and of course, Cohen and Levi uh, that we appear uh, everywhere. So what were these names? They corresponded to recent migrants uh, from the territory of modern France, and they uh, are related to the expulsion from France. In other areas uh, of modern Italy, names were particularly rare. Uh, we find still a reference to Abu Lafe already in 13th century. Uh, this family came from Spain 
before the expulsion. Uh, well, the two two hundred years before the expulsion, they came to uh, to Spain. And uh, some families are local, uh, corresponding to Italian uh, Jews uh, whose ancestors lived. Uh, in the territory of uh, Italy for centuries, family like Finzi, Norsa, uh, Portaleone. We also find during the same period uh, names like De Camerino, De Fano, De Recanati, De Pisa, De Rieti, De Tivoli, De Volterra. And actually when we find the first reference to these names, we cannot be sure that we really deal with last names that correspond to hereditary family names. Uh, for the first references, often uh, this designation just indicate from what Italian city the family came. So for example, uh, De Volterra uh, can be just a, a nickname for someone coming uh, from the city of Volterra in Tuscany, Oh, it can be uh, for some branches already a hereditary last name. Uh, but during the next centuries, all these names became hereditary uh, uh, and the uh, prefix de uh, was often uh, dropped. Uh, what about the next centuries, next three centuries? The, uh, why I uh, designated 1492 as an important uh, date, it is because of the, uh, after this uh, date, uh, because of the expulsion of Jews uh, from Spain, uh, a number of Jews who were living in the territory of uh, modern Italy were also concerned by these expulsions. For example, uh, in 1492, when there was the expulsion of all Jews from crown of Aragon, it concerned not only the kingdom of Aragon in northern Spain, but also territory that belonged to crown of Aragon, including Sardinia, where a small number of uh, Jews lived, and uh, the island of Sicily, where a large majority of Jews uh, lived uh, at that period. So in 1492, uh, where was a law prescribing Jews to leave, and uh, all Sicilian Jews uh, either uh, left in 1492 or 1493, or got converted. Uh, in the Kingdom of Naples, that belonged also to Spanish uh, uh, dynasties, uh, there were two expulsions. First of them was in 15. 10, and it concerned all of southern Italy, uh, so the part which is, uh, correspond to Calabria and uh, the part which correspond to Apulia, uh, and the uh, area around Naples itself, Campania. So uh, in 1510, the expulsion was partial, but in 1541, all Jews who lived at that period in this territory were to live to be converted. So after 1541, south to Rome, there were no uh, practicing Jew uh, left. In purple states themselves, in 1569, there was also a law uh, concerning expulsion of Jews. Uh, the only cities in which Jews were authorized to continue to live were Rome and Ancona. Uh, but in all other areas, uh, including, for example, the province of Umbria with Perugia, where a large Jewish community lived, lived at that period, uh, Bologna, where also a large community lived uh, before the, that date, Jews were to leave this area, either to join Ancona, Rome, or to live in other area. But we were not authorized to continue to live in these territories anymore after 1569. In 1597, the northern part of uh, the modern Italy, but at that 
period corresponding to Duchy of Milan, and it was uh, con uh, taken by Spanish dynasties. And in 1597, a general expulsion was also proclaimed for this area. Again, Jews were to leave this area to go to neighboring areas or to migrate elsewhere. In Republic of Jena, uh, Jew, uh, the community, uh, Jewish community was rather small, but here as well, uh, much later in 1743, there was a general expulsion and all Jews, uh, the, the small community that existed, uh, needed to leave. So uh, you see that because of all this expulsion, the uh, geography of Jewish settlement in Italy changed dramatically. So where Jews were authorized to live after all these laws and where we continued to live. So we continued to live in a Republic of Venice that was covering Venice itself and such a large community as Verona, Padua. We continued to live in what is today Piemont, but at that period, uh, it was the um, uh, eastern part of Duce of Savoy, uh, the uh, western part corresponding to the territory of modern French Savoy. And there were also small duches like uh, that, uh, those of Mantua, of Ferrara, of Modena, of Parma, where Jews were also authorized to live, and especially important area where Jews were also authorized to live that correspond to modern Tus Tuscany. Uh, but even in these areas where Jews were authorized to live, uh, the Jews were uh, not able to continue to live where they wanted, and there was a gap so uh, that were introduced uh, where Jews were, uh, were needed to live. And so the first of them is Venice, 1560. Uh, then the next one, Rome, in the middle of 16th century. Then uh, next year, Ancona. So these are the two. Uh, places where, as I said, Jews were authorized to live even after the general expulsion of 1569 from Papal States. And then for all other areas where Jews were authorized to live, uh, ghettos were introduced during mainly 17th century, uh, sometimes even uh, 18th century, uh, but all places where a Jewish community uh, were not tiny, but there were some uh, dozens or even hundreds of families living. In all of them, there were ghettos uh, to which Jews were confined. The only ex exception was Livorno. Livorno was a totally exceptional. Uh, it was a city uh, where Jews were authorized to live uh, until the, uh, even during the period when everywhere where were ghettos, but in Livorno, no ghetto was ever created and Jews were, uh, were able to live as we wanted and where we wanted. So uh, at the end of 18th century, you see here that the geography uh, of Jewish settlement in Italy changed dramatically in comparison to the end of the 15th century. Uh, you see here, the largest community were in Tuscany and especially in Livorno because of uh, the free uh, possibility to, to settle uh, without any, uh, any uh, difficulty. In Emilia Romagna, Jew Jews were also present, but they were concentrated in such cities like Ferrara uh, and uh, several others where uh, we were ghettos, but they were still tolerated. And then uh, a few thousands of Jews lived uh, in uh, Piedmont and the, uh, in the territory of Venice Respo Republic. Uh, and 
in uh, March, uh, which correspond to Ancona and few uh, cities around Ancona. Rome itself, also a few thousands of Jews continued to live at that period. So you see that the uh, number of Jews uh, diminished dramatically uh, in comparison to the uh, end of the 15th century. And especially geography changed totally. Um, so this were the general elements concerning the history of uh, Jewish communities uh, in the territory of uh, modern Italy. And now we will uh, go to names used uh, by Jews and to different community that formed uh, this uh, Jewish uh, population of Italy and how can we relate uh, some names to uh, different uh, communities and different origins. Uh, first group of Jews who uh, populated, uh, so of course I started, uh, when, when I started to speak about the history of Jews in Italy, uh, I spoke about the Italian Jews who were living, whose ancestors were living uh, in the territory of uh, Italy since antiquity, antiquity. But uh, what was the migration uh, that started during the Middle Ages. The first uh, group, uh, a large group of migrants came from Southern Germany. So these Ashkenazic Jews came mainly between 14 and 17 centuries. Uh, they populated, uh, uh, they, uh, they a community were created in the territory of Republic of Venice uh, in the Duchy of Milan, and some of them also came to uh, Duchy of Savoy, so the territory of modern Piemont. Uh, here they created their own community because there were no Jews living there before they came. So uh, after the uh, migration of Jews from southern Germany, uh, in Austria to these territories, Jewish community were created in all of Northern Italy. And this community were Yiddish speaking and uh, they continued to speak Yid Yiddish uh, until uh, the beginning of uh, 17th century when they uh, switched to Italian uh, dialect, local Italian dial dialects. But uh, during the whole 16th centuries, uh, the, the Northern Italy was extremely important center for uh, Ashkenazic Jewry and a large majority of uh, printed books came from a uh, printing house uh, situated in Northern Italy. And even a large uh, number of authors uh, who wrote these books were also uh, living, uh, lived uh, in Northern Italy. Um, Second uh, wave of uh, migration came from France. So in France in 1394, uh, all Jews from the territory of the Kingdom of France, so that correspond to all of modern France, except for its south or south uh, eastern part, so the Provence. Uh, so all Jews except for those from Provence were expelled from France. Some of them came to Germany, but other came uh, to Northern Italy and uh, gradually way spread in all uh, uh, Northern and uh, Central Italy. Uh, but uh, one uh, important part of Jews who were expelled from France, they came uh, direct, not directly to Italy, they first came to the Duchy of Savoy and to the territory that to, today belongs to France, but actually it belongs to France only uh, since the second half of the, eight, uh, of the uh, 19th century, uh, when Savoy was uh, uh, taken by, uh, by uh, French uh, empire. Uh, but uh, otherwise, at that period, it was an uh, independent state where Jews were tolerated. So after the expulsion of Jews from France, uh, many of them uh, settled in uh, the territory of modern French Savoy, uh, the Montagnard uh, area of uh, modern France. But uh, 
uh, at the end, uh, during the 15th century, the condition of line, uh, legal and especially economic became uh, not good for Jews who were living in Savoy. And so they continued their uh, migration route and many of them came to the Eastern part of Savoy that correspond to today Piemont. So the area uh, around the city of Turin, uh, Italian Torino. In 1492, after the expulsion of Jews from Spain, some of them settled in, Spain, in the territory of modern Italy. Uh, the biggest community was created in Rome. Uh, there were also a few families that uh, came to Venice, but uh, they were really very few. Uh, there was a number of families that came to Naples, who came to Calabria or Apulia, so in the southern Italy, because at that period, uh, Jews were still tolerated in this area. But after the expulsion of all Jews from the kingdom of Na Naples, all of them uh, could not continue living uh, uh, here. And either they joined Rome or they came to Ottoman Empire. Uh, this was the main destination. So uh, the only place where a large community of Spanish migrants was created and that was stable for centuries was Rome. After the expulsion of Jews from Sicily, uh, many of them came to Rome, others came to Naples or different other places here. And again, as for other uh, people who were ex expelled from Spain, uh, uh, all those who uh, settled after this expulsion in the southern part, uh, part of uh, continental Italy, they needed to leave uh, just a few decades later because of the expulsion from Kingdom of Naples. Then uh, France, French Kingdom annexed uh, the territory of Provence and uh, in 5001, all Jews of Provence, were uh, all Jews were expelled from Provence. And again, some of them came to Italy and uh, the uh, best traces I was able to find, uh, they correspond to the city of Rome. In other areas, they maybe also came, but the traces are very uh, uh, small. But in Rome, I was able to identify by names a number of families that clearly came to Rome from uh, the area around Marseille, uh, Aix-en-Provence, uh, so that all of the uh, Provence uh, area after the expulsion of 1501. Uh, a new group appeared of, uh, of migrants came during uh, since the mid of 16th century from the city of Antwerp. So this city belonged to Spanish crown. It's now in Belgium, but uh, it belonged at that time to Spanish crown. And so Jews were not authorized to live there, but uh, uh, a large community of new Christians. So uh, whose ancestors were Jews, but who uh, at least on the surface, uh, were Catholic, uh, was created in Antwerp. And then uh, from Antwerp, some of them came to Ancona and Ferrara, starting with the mid uh, 16th century. And then coming to Ancona and Ferrara, they were uh, returning to the uh, religion of their ancestors. So after being uh, Catholic for uh, for three for, uh, or four uh, generations. Uh, the same group of so-called Portuguese Jews also came not only from Antwerp, but directly from Portugal and Spain uh, during the 16th and 17th century. And their direction was mainly the city of Livorno, where, uh, uh, who, uh, where the, uh, the uh, Duke of Tuscany, uh, invited Jews from any area, uh, starting with the end of the 16th century. So uh, um, 
it was especially during the first decades of the uh, 17th century that numerous Jews, uh, numerous Christians, formerly uh, Catholics, came uh, to uh, the city of Livorno and the neighboring city of Pisa, and there they became uh, openly Jewish and they continue, uh, continued to live as Jews in Livorno, in Pisa. Some of them came to Florence. Uh, some of them came also to uh, Piemont, and also there was a community that was created by uh, people from Portugal and Spain uh, in Genoa. And then uh, during the whole period between 16th and 20th centuries, there were Jews who were coming from Ottoman Empire, mainly, mainly to the seaports, so these were merchants uh, who were coming to Ancona, to Venice, uh, to Trieste. Uh, and actually Jews were coming uh, back and forth. So some of them were coming here, but other Jews were coming from Venice, from uh, Ancona to Ottoman Empire. So between this Ad Adriatic Sea, uh, sea shore and Ottoman Empire, there were permanent uh, commercial exchanges, and not only commercial, but also exchanges of people. And some merchants were uh, living either in the territory of modern Italy or in Ottoman Empire. And some branches, uh, were, uh, some families were branching, uh, creating uh, branches, uh, some of them here and the Adriatic uh, Sea, uh, seashore of modern Italy and uh, other branches in the Ottoman Empire. Uh, in 1669, uh, several ships uh, bringing uh, about 400 Jews from or Oran uh, that were expelled uh, by Spanish uh, governors from the city of Oran, now in Algeria, were expelled. They came to the uh, to Villefranche, a town near Nice, and from uh, this place they mainly settled to Genoa and Livorno. And after the expulsion from Genoa, they came to Livorno. Uh, often they came to Livorno. And then, uh, after the mid 18th century and the whole 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, we were regular migration from the cities of Tunis, Alger, uh, Tripoli, and Libya to Livorno. And actually we were migration, exactly as I ex 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 explained it, the exchanges uh, between Adriatic Sea Shore uh, and Ottoman Empire, the same uh, was true between Livorno and these three cities uh, on, in uh, Northern Africa. The migration was in both direction, from North Africa to Livorno and from Livorno to these three cities. So in this table, I summarized uh, what were different groups of Jews. Uh, all these groups had originally different culture, uh, different languages, different names. Uh, so everything was different, but gradually uh, many of them merged in the territory of modern Italy. And so you see uh, Jews who, uh, whose ancestors lived uh, in, it, in the territory of Apennine uh, Peninsula since the middle, uh, since the antiquity, they were concentrated mainly in Rome, Ancona, Mantua, and the whole province of Tuscany. Uh, Ashkenazic Jews were mainly uh, lived in Northern Italy. So the cities of Venice, Padua, Verona, uh, also in Mantua as well. A French Jews, uh, Piemont and Rome, Sicilian, Na Naples, but only for several decades and mainly Rome, Spanish Rome, Ottoman, the three cities of the uh, Adriatic seashore, uh, ex, ex, uh, ex uh, uh, new, uh, new, uh, uh, new Christians, uh, Portuguese Jews, uh, lived in the cities of Venice, Pisa, Livorno, Genoa, and North African Jews mainly came to Livorno. So now uh, I will suggest a few names and you can try 
to guess to what source to what initial congregation uh, these names correspond. And so please, if you can write in a question in answers, uh, or no, you can, if you can write in the chat. Uh, so these two names do not allow, of course, to identify the community. But other names from the same group allow to identify the community. Okay, so I see that people were able to recognize Sephardic Jews who came uh, from Spain uh, in, after 1492. Uh, so they came from uh, Aragon, Catalonia, Castille. Uh, so these are Sephardic, Sephardic Jews who came after the expulsion of 1492. Uh, one example, uh, the name Sforno, uh, this name uh, is born, uh, was born by one of the most famous Italian rabbinical scholars of the Renaissance period. Uh, I tried to identify its etymology. I it was, initially it was very difficult. I was able to identify with the name. The name sounds Italian, but it's not known for Italian non-Jews at all. And so, uh, uh, thanks to a publication of one uh, Italian uh, historian, I was able to find that the ancestor of this rabbi came uh, with the name Del Forno, uh, came from Barcelona to Bologna in 1407. So uh, the name is actually Sephardic. It was not, it's not, it was not created in Italy. But how uh, it became Sforno? I'm sure that the uh, um, uh, archive document that say, speaks about Del Forno has a spelling error. It was not Del Forno, it was surely Des Forno. Uh, because uh, when I looked after I uh, have found this uh, reference, I looked to the list of Jews who were converted to Christianity uh, in Barcelona uh, in 1392, converted by force. And in this list, uh, this list is available, it was published, and in this, name, uh, this list we have names of new, new names that were taken after the conversion, and what was the names before, used before the conversion. So I found two persons called Desforn, Samuel Desforn, Abraham Desforn, who were converted to Christianity by force in 1392. And actually, I think this Samuel Desforn was able, most likely he, he is the same person who 20 years later uh, uh, escaped from uh, Spain uh, to Italy and uh, became again Jewish. Or maybe it is not the same person, but in any case, it is someone from the same family. And uh, how the name was created, actually, the original uh, name used at Barcelona was Desform from Oven. In Italy, the final uh, vowel was added just to add, uh, make the noun uh, sound more Italian. And at some moment, the last uh, consonant of the prefix des uh, was lost in the prefix and it joined the name. And so like that, the name became by certainly by some uh, scribe error uh, from this form, it became this form and when the, the was abandoned, the name became just form. Uh, another group, Cohen Levy as usual, Lumbroso, Boccaro, Atias, Namias, Casuto, Espinoza. So just. Uh, 
I add three others from the same group, Rodriguez Mirando, Fernandez Diaz, Nunes Fortado. I think this is quite evident. These are former Christians. So uh, ex-New Christians, ex-Maranos, uh, uh, the so-called uh, Portuguese Jews who became Jewish in Italy. And some of them retain, uh, retained their names they were used uh, when they were uh, Catholics, like Rodriguez Mirando, Fernandez Diaz, Nunes Fortado, or Bocaro, uh, Us Espinosa, but other uh, took names that were used by their ancestors in Spain, when, uh, where, by their ancestors who, uh, at the period when they still were Jewish, like Lombroso, Atias, Namias, are clearly not Catholic names. These were the names uh, taken by their descendants several uh, generations later, exactly like Cohen and Levy as well, of course. And now an example, the name Almagia. Uh, the earliest reference correspond to end of the 16th century. Uh, name again, I known for Italian non-Jews, uh, but in Hebrew sources, it always appears with initial ein. And so if a name appears with initial ein for non-Ashkenazic Jews, it means that the name most likely is related to either uh, to some Semitic la language, so either Hebrew or Aramaic or Arabic. Uh, but in Arabic and Hebrew, there is no such word. The uh, final Aleph indicates that the name is most likely based on the Aramaic word. And indeed, in the Kaddish prayer, which is uh, in Aramaic language, it is the last word in the sentence which is repeated several times uh, during the uh, pr uh, prayer of Kaddish. But uh, so uh, when uh, I identified this, uh, the question was why a person could select a so unusual name just to take a name from the Jewish prayer and uh, to be, uh, to, uh, this name to become uh, uh, the name of the family. And uh, for me, it was a total uh, complete mystery until a few months. And it was even the mystery for me when I published my book about the uh, one year ago uh, about the uh, surnames of Jews from uh, Italy, France, and Portuguese community. So I, in this book, I presented this etymology, but I was not able to say to what community this, uh, the first bearers uh, belong it and why this name was selected. So the mystery was solved a few months ago when I received a letter uh, from uh, one uh, Brazilian genealogist, a woman who was born in Italy in, uh, from this family, and she shared with me a family tree of the family Almagia that was compiled by, one, uh, by, by her grand grandfather uh, in Italy. And so this family tree starts with Ferdinando d'Almeida Deto Almadia, and his son is already uh, called Almagia. So actually what uh, was, what uh, occurred, uh, the Catholic name was Almeida. This is a Christian name, uh, typical for uh, Catholics uh, from Portugal, from Spain, uh, the, the name itself com comes from a place name. The place name is of Arabic uh, origin, but the last name uh, for Catholics is not of Arabic origin. It just means it's always with D. So it's, it was taken by uh, Catholics who came from the city of Almeida. Uh, and Jews, when they uh, were converted uh, to uh, Catholic religion, uh, at the end of the 15th century, they took usually the name, uh, they received usually the names of their godfather, so we received names that were used by uh, uh, Catholics, uh, old, old uh, Christians, so uh, Catholics who had no Jewish ancestors. And so Almeida was one of these Catholic names, but uh, 
because of the phonetic closeness between Almeida, uh, so the name Almagia was clearly selected as a new Jewish name uh, with the reference to the uh, word appearing in the Aramaic uh, language Kaddish prayer, but uh, it was selected because the uh, word was uh, sounding close to Almeida. Uh, another community, uh, again, Cohen Levy, as usual. And names like Gentile, Del Banco, Del Medico, Colorni, Cividali, Pinkerle, Artom, Luzzato, Morpurgo, Calimani. Uh, some of these names are very common in, uh, for Italian Jews. So to what group do they belong? Uh, I mean the first bearers. Because of course, during the next centuries, people uh, bearing these names, uh, we, uh, some of them uh, uh, moved to other communities, they joined uh, different communities and uh, we lost their uh, original uh, community roots. But the first bearers of these names were Ashkenazic. And some other group, Mince Alpron, which is the Italian version of Halper, Katzenelin Bogen, the name that for the first time appeared in northern Italy, uh, where one rabbi, uh, the main, uh, the chief rabbi of Padua, uh, took this name because he came to uh, northern Italy from the city, uh, from the small town uh, Katzenelin Bogen uh, in Germany and the family Rappa from Nuremberg, uh, that uh, some, one branch of which uh, settled in the uh, small town of Porto in Northern Italy. And the family, uh, uh, some branches were called Rappa, other branches were called Porto, and some became Rappo Porto. And also the names like Tedesco or Polacco. Tedesco means German in Italian. A Polacco means Paul in uh, Italian, so of course, uh, these people had no names when they came uh, but, uh, to, to, to Italy, but uh, they, their names uh, explicitly testify about the uh, Ashkenazic roots of these families. Kalimani, I think also the first name, Kalman, is uh, well, uh, uh, perfectly visible in this name. Marpurgo, Morpurgo is coming from the city of Marburg in what is now Slovenia, again, uh, something, uh, the, the, the German, uh, the German uh, route is, can be uh, visible. But of course, names like Del Medico, Del Banco, uh, Colorni, Cividali, it's not possible to know that the family were originally Ashkenazic without uh, historical and genealogical studies. An example, Lampronti. Uh, a very famous Italian rabbi who lived, uh, who was born uh, at Ferrara at the end of 17th centuries. Uh, you see there are uh, uh, streets in different Italian uh, 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 places called after uh, his name. Uh, so what is the origin of his name? The name doesn't, is. Uh, is unknown among Italian non-Jews. Uh, it sounds Italian, but it is not used in Italy for, uh, by any uh, non-Jewish family. Uh, he was uh, a rabbi of Spanish synagogue. So my first idea when I learned that he was a rabbi of Spanish synagogue was that he was uh, of Sephardic origin. Uh, but I tried to identify, uh, I looked to the most uh, comprehensive list of uh, Jews from uh, medieval Spain, nothing similar to Lampronti. Another uh, information concerning his genealogy, his great-grandfather came from Constantinople. 
So again, we uh, make think uh, about uh, Sephardic origin. So a rabbi of Spanish synagogue, great grandfather from Constantinople, uh, uh, Istanbul now, so Ottoman Empire. Uh, with these two information, uh, the odds would be very, very high that the rabbi is Sephardic, of, uh, that his family was Sephardic. But actually, the genealogical data published by Italian uh, historians uh, who found them in the archives uh, allowed uh, to explain why the name is unknown among Ottoman and Iberian Jews. Other members of his family, his brother, uh, the brother of his, uh, his uncles, uh, they uh, were having the name Alpron. And Alpron is the Italian version of the famous rabbinical Ashkenazic family Halper. Uh, and so uh, coming from the uh, city of Halbron in uh, southern Germany. So uh, how it became, how Alpron, if you look here you, you can find all these letters in Lime Pronti. So the T is the suffix that was added, uh, Italian suffix that was added at some point. And at also in some point, the initial L and A exchanged their places. And this is the way Alpron became Lampron. And this form ap appears in some sources. And then with the addition of Italian suffix, it became Lampronti. What is this community? Cohen, Levi, as usual, but Foa, Segre, Lattes, Treves, Carcassoni, Momigliano, Galli, Ugalico. Francese means French in Italian, and Provenzale means pro uh, someone from pro Provence in southern France. So all these families. Uh, with this name, of course, not all Cohen and uh, not Levi, but some Cohen, some Levi, and uh, the initial, uh, the first bearers of all these names, they came from France. Uh, names like again Cohen, but more unusual name like Toaf, Saudun, Rustico, Menashe, Del Presto, Halaf, Zamato, and this is the clue also Siciliano. So all these names came to Rome mainly from Sicily. And Tov is the name of Arabic origin, but this is not a surprise because the Jews uh, who lived in Sicily, uh, their vernacular language was Arabic until the beginning of 15th century. Uh, so, uh, and this is also explained why we have a name like Saadun uh, Uhalaf as well. Here you have examples of names of merchants who came and uh, settled in uh, Italy, uh, who came from uh, Ottoman Empire. Some of them are clearly Sephardic like Arditi, Gavison, Benveniste, Danone. Uh, but Carcassonne is already French Jewish, uh, originally French Jewish family that came from France to Ottoman Empire, then from Ottoman Empire to Italy. Uh, community again with Cohen Levy, but also with such names as Goslan, Cancino, Sasportas, El Haik, Tubiana, Nataf, Buznak, Guetta, Cohen Tanuji. All these families came mainly to Livorno from North Africa. And Cancino was the chief rabbi who was among the 400 persons expelled from Oran in 1669. Sasportas was also a family that was expelled from uh, Oran. An example, Delmar. So Delmar means uh, of the sea in Spanish. And it, the name also appears as del mare, uh, the same meaning in Italian, of the sea. Uh, with this meaning, we cannot say immediately what is the origin of this uh, family. The earliest reference is Jacob del Mar, who also the same person is uh, written Jacob del Mare in Genoa. And 
in uh, some sources we find that he was from Oran. He was not expelled from Oran. He lived here in uh, Genoa. Even uh, it was a, he was a merchant who came before the expulsion, general expulsion. Uh, three years uh, before, we have in the same city of Genoa, Jews called David and Jacob Al-Bahar. Actually, Al-Bahar means the sea in Arabic. So Al-Bahr, and in the, uh, in the uh, North African dialect of Arabic, it's, uh, there is a vowel which is pronounced between H and R, R. So it's really Al-Bahr, the sea. So, uh, and the family appears in uh, 6559, and then there is no reference at all. And three years later, you see the same first name, Jacob, but already with the name Delmar. So there is no doubt he was a Jew from North Africa who in general uh, translated his name from Arabic to Italian, but as the community was mainly uh, Sephardic, uh, sometimes it appears also in the Spanish version, Del Mar. And finally, uh, some examples of uh, Italian uh, Jewish names, of course, as usual, Cohen and Levi, but also such families like Ascoli, Della Pergola, Campagnano, Ponte Corvo, Montalcini, Recanati, Modigliani, Scazzocchio, Tagliocozzo, Volterra. These are names typical for Italian Jews. Uh, just a few examples, I have no time, uh, but just uh, you see a groups of phonetically very close names like Cremona and Carmona, both from Italy, but one is Ashkenazic and another is Sephardic. Can you try to, to guess? which one of two is Ashkenazic, which one of two is Sephardic. Cremona is a city in Northern Italy. Carmona is a city in Spain. So Cremona was a name taken by Ashkenazic Jews who settled in Cremona and Carmona was brought as a ready-made name from Spain. Uh, Sonino e Soncino. A very uh, close situation. So one of, e of them is Italian and another is Ashkenazic. Sonino is Italian, it's a, a town uh, near Rome. Soncina is Ashkenazic, it's a town in the northern Italy and the Ashkenazic family that settled at this, in this town took this name. Uh, Pardo and Prato. Pardo is Sephardic, Prato is Italian name from the town of Prato. Luzzato and Luzada. Luzada is a Portuguese name, uh, so ex-Catholic name, and Luzzato is Ashkenazic name from Northern Italy. And finally, Castro, Castro, Castro. Actually, there, I was able to identify three totally independent groups of Castro in Italy. One came uh, from Spain as Jews, another came as uh, Catholics, so Portuguese Jews, uh, they came uh, from uh, as the Catholics and they became Jews and uh, openly the Jewish uh, returning to the religion of their ancestors and they uh, they uh, uh, kept the name they used as Catholics, Castro. And finally, Castro was also a town near, uh, near Rome and so there was a uh, Italian Jewish family, Castro, that also existed. And uh, final element is Italian Jews in other countries. So what, to what countries Jews came from Italy? Before, until now we, uh, we discussed only uh, from what area Jews came to Italy and now uh, from Italy. After the expulsion from Sicily, a large majority of Jews from Sicily, those who did not uh, go to Rome, they, uh, they migrated to Ottoman Empire. The same is true for Jews from Calabria, uh, Apulia, and the Campania, 
Uh, so they're all uh, Jews who were expelled from Kingdom of Naples at the first part, during the first half of the 16th century. Uh, during the uh, 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, there were, as I explained it, exchanges between Livorno, Venice, and Ottoman Empire. And these exchanges came to the bo in both directions. Uh, also, there were exchanges with Amsterdam and London, but uh, usually they were not really exchanges. Some Jews of Italy came and joined, uh, uh, um, joined the um, uh, community of, uh, that were formed in London and Amsterdam, the Sephardic community formed by Portuguese Jews, so ex-Catholics uh, during the 17th, 18th and 19th century. Some of these Jews who joined this community, they came from Northern Italy and they actually were uh, belonging to Ashkenazic families. But as they, at that period, they were already uh, speaking Italian. Italian is close to uh, Portuguese, uh, it's a Rom Roman, uh, Roman's uh, language. And also uh, at that period, Ashkenazic community in Northern Italy were not already following the exactly the same right as Ashkenazic Jews in Germany and East, especially not those in Eastern Europe. So uh, for some, for them, uh, for many of them, it was uh, from the cultural uh, point of view, more easy to join a locality in Amsterdam or London, not of Ashkenazic Jews, but of Sephardic ones. And I also explained it, exchanges between Livorno and the three largest communities uh, on northern, it uh, northern Africa, uh, Tunis, Algeria, and Tripoli in Libya. Uh, thank you for your attention. And so uh, if you have some question, I, I will look to the question and, uh, questions and see whether you have any question uh, of the general uh, interest. I think we should just take one or two questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for now, because we're running a little over time. Question: Since Sephardim came to northern Germany as refugees uh, uh, from German states, might be Ashkenazic uh, too. Uh, well, uh, some indeed some Sephardim came to northern Germany, but these were. Uh, not initially, they were not Jewish, but uh, we were so called Portuguese Jews, so ex Catholic who became uh, openly Jewish uh, in uh, Hamburg, for example, and from Harburg, uh, some of them came to Copenhagen, to, to the Denmark, and to some other cities in northern Germany. Uh, but uh, they, uh, for example, in Venice, there were clearly some families who came uh, to Venice, uh, like for example, Aboab family, uh, the first uh, members of this uh, very famous uh, Sephardic family, they came to Venice, not from Spain, but they came from Hamburg. Uh, but these were rather exceptions. Uh, usually uh, Jews from Hamburg, they were jo joining uh, the community of London, of uh, Amsterdam, uh, or of uh, Caribbean islands, but not those from from Italy. Uh, uh, any Jewish migration out of Italy to the Balkans, did it exist? Yes, uh, I, as I told, uh, we were uh, uh, migration from Italy to the Ottoman Empire and uh, uh, when I, uh, what I mean by Ottoman Empire, of course, it's correspond to modern uh, Turkey and uh, not only to modern Turkey, but also to modern Greece, modern Serbia, etc. So for example, if I take just one example, the name Finzi, uh, F-I-N-Z-I, Finzi, it became one of the uh, most popular name in numerous uh, 
Sephardi communities of the Balkans, but actually the family originally was not Sephardic at all. It was an Italian family, but one of its members uh, joined uh, Sephardic community in uh, Venice or in Livorno and from it, so like that the family became uh, Sephardic and uh, then one branch uh, came to uh, Ottoman Empire, to Saloniki and from Sal Salonika and from Salonika uh, different branches spread to Bulgaria, for example, where there was a numer large number of Finns uh, to Belgrade and Serbia, uh, to Skopje, to Monaster, uh, so Bitola in uh, North Macedonia. So yes, some families, when they came to uh, Ottoman Empire, they joined the, the Sephardic uh, community. Even families that were not Sephardic at all, uh, they joined a uh, uh, Sephardic community in, in uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, when was the migration from Italy to Ukraine? Uh, very small group. Uh, so uh, actually not Ukraine, uh, Poland. Uh, in Ukraine, there, were, there was no migration from Italy at all, uh, but uh, at least known to me. Uh, but uh, or to his, uh, historical sources that are available to historians. Uh, but uh, then at the mid of the 16th century, uh, the Polish uh, noble Zamoyski created a new city of Zamoś in southern Poland. Uh, he invited, he did not authorize initially Ashkenazic Jews to settle, but he invited Sephardic Jews to settle there. And so uh, his uh, relationship was for, with the Jews from Ottoman Empire and uh, some Jews from Ottoman Empire, uh, they joined, uh, they came to Zamosh in southern uh, Poland, uh, but uh, in the, uh, there is a known list of uh, community uh, members uh, at the end of the 16th century who lived in the city of Zamosh in southern Poland. And many people on this list actually appear under the nickname Italian. And I'm almost sure that these people were not Italian Jews themselves, they came from Italy, but uh, looking to their last names and looking to the, what was the category of Jews who were uh, 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 wanting to relocate at that period. Uh, clearly these people who came to Poland from Italy they corresponded to Portuguese uh, uh, Jewish communities. So ex-Catholics who uh, some of them uh, re uh, came to Italy and re remained in Italy, but others uh, continued to the Ottoman Empire and some of them were settled, I think especially the uh, poor ones uh, in Poland. But this community uh, uh, existed for a few generations and then it uh, merged with uh, local Ashkenazim and it did not survive uh, later. Uh, maybe one additional question. What are the most common Jewish surnames in Italy today besides Cohen Elivi? Uh, I have seen the list I, in my book about uh, in my dictionary of Jewish surnames from Italy, France, and Portuguese community. Uh, in the annex, uh, I uh, I annexed the list of most common uh, names uh, that I found in the paper by Sergio della Pergola. Uh, mainly, the names which are the most common they correspond to Italian names. Uh, so uh, names uh, like Sonino, like Tivoli, uh, Recanati, so names uh, with, uh, whose ancestors lived in Italy for centuries. And uh, actually these were names which were most common in Rome. Uh, what about Italian who went to South America? Uh, I don't know about any large migration to South America. Of course, I know of some persons who uh, migrated from Italy to South America, South America, 
uh, I mentioned a woman from, from Brazil, uh, and but uh, we, there was not mass migration to South America, at least I was not uh, uh, able to, to, to see it in any source. Dr. Bader, Dr. I think we'll take the last question. The last question concerning uh, Trieste. Uh, the question is, was Trieste under Austrian rule at one point? Yes, of course. Uh, Trieste is now uh, the uh, city uh, on the Adriatic seashore uh, on the north uh, eastern most part of Italy. And actually, it became Italian only after the uh, first uh, world war, but uh, even before uh, before it was part of the Habsburg Austro-Hungarian Empire, but not only this city was part of Austro-Hungarian Empire because all North, uh, Northern Italy was part of Austro-Hungarian Empire, including Venice, including uh, Milano, uh, etc. So, but uh, Trieste, it's true that it was uh, specifically part of, uh, for centuries, it was part of uh, uh, Habsburg Empire that later became called uh, Austrian and then later, since mid 19th century, uh, became called Austro-Hungarian Empire. But uh, Jews uh, who uh, settled there, uh, the large majority of them uh, settled only during the 19th century, and they mainly came from Italy. And so they uh, their uh, language was uh, Italian, their names are typically Italian, but after the end of the First World War, uh, when Austro-Hungarian uh, Austro Empire ceased to exist, uh, thousands of Jews from different parts of ex-Austro-Hungarian Empire came to Trieste and to the neighboring city of Fiume that now belongs to Croatia, but uh, during the 20th, it was also part of Italy. Uh, so uh, Trieste, clearly, if we look to the names of persons, uh, we, uh, I can say that it belongs to the Italian uh, Jewish uh, cultural area, even if it was not part of Italy until the beginning of 20th century. Dr. Bader, thank you, as always, for this informative, excellent program and presentation. I see a lot of people have wrote in on the have written on the chat uh, to thank you for uh, for this for this program. And just to let everybody know that a recording will be available, and we will post it. We'll post a link on our discussion group and on the Jewish Genealogy Portal on Facebook. So if you're not registered for them, please do so. Uh, our Jewish Gen Talks series continues. Um, on Sunday, this Sunday, March 7, we're partnering with a group called the Jewish Heritage Alliance, and there will be a program called Women of Sfarad. Uh, you can register for it on our website, jewishgen.org slash live. And then next week, uh, on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we will have Serafima Velkovich from Yad Vashem, and she will be talking about the fate of Holocaust victims in Yad Vashem's documentation and projects. And again, you can register at jewishgen.org slash live. Um, we thank you again for joining us. And uh, a couple of you have asked, we will be having another presentation with Dr. Bader uh, probably next month on Portuguese Jewry, and we will confirm that date uh, in the days ahead. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you again, Dr. Vader, and have a wonderful rest of the day.